at GameSpot's weekly video game chat show every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Pacific right here on videogames.com or if you're watching this on twitch.tv forward slash GameSpot or you're watching this on demand on GameSpot YouTube and all those it pop, some videos pop up on weird things, right? Like Periscope, Amazon and oh well, Snapchat. Snapchat, yes, chat, Snapchat, Facebook video. AOL chat rooms. That's the one. I, mm, I was thinking of like, there's like an AOL video player, or like Daily Motion. I've seen some GameSpot stuff pop up on. It does really pop up in odd places. Yeah. Because we have some deal with like Yahoo where they That's what move it our is. stuff around. I don't yeah. Know. It just Bumble? turns up. Bub, what? Bumble. Bumble? Yeah, it's a dating app. Oh, yeah, really? You can totally find us there. I thought it was like <laughs> like a Crunchyroll alternative or something. No, no. It took me years to realize that was an actual, I thought it was like a food service. Yeah, you would think you're going to del- get delivered nice sushi? Yeah. No, no. No. You what? get anime. Got hentai instead. What am I saying? <laughs> oh, is it really? Uh, maybe you can well, sign me. Sign me up. I, I would assume we're not sponsored by. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like <just> <laughs> because we are a podcast as well. If you're listening to this, uh, the lobby is now available on iTunes, and also we have the RSS feed out there. So if you have another um, podcast program you like to use, uh, gobble it up there. In fact, uh, I'm going to keep. <laughs> <laughs> what? What was so funny about I that? It was mildly funny. He, <laughs> wow! I just love the word gobble. <laughs> gobble, no, gobble, gobble, gobble. It He's just makes me think of Cards Against Humanity. I'm not going to say the card. But. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I can imagine perhaps where that's going. Uh, yeah, uh, but if you can, please uh, review and rate us on iTunes. That would be super great to get us up there in the new and notable. Um, if uh, if there's some reviews up by today's show, you, we need to hit a certain threshold before they like publish the reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if there's enough by the end of this show, then I'll read out what's there. If there's not, then I'll do it next week. Uh, so yeah, if you can go in there and review and rate us, that would be super good. And of course, subscribe uh, every week. Uh, I, I, an hour of us chatting about video games. This week, Justin Haywood's here. I am. For a while. For a little bit. I have to run to catch a flight very shortly after this. Why? Where so are you flying? It's going up to Vegas, you okay. know, for a fun weekend. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so the di- Vegas on a Wednesday, always fun. Our, the Dice Conference is going on, mm. which you might have heard about on GameSpot. It's mostly, it, usually not a lot of big news coming out of it, but it's an interesting show because it always has huge developers giving keynote addresses mm. and just talking about how they make games and like their philosophies behind stuff. Two of the big guys this year are, of course, going to be Kojima and wow. Guillermo del Toro. Very interesting. G- famous game maker, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're also going to get <laughs> Todd Howard coming to talk about Fallout. So it's a really cool show to watch, and we'll be doing some interviews with those guys at the show. Peter is going to be going in to talk cool. to Kojima himself. Great. Peter Brand here as well. Yeah, you're going to DICE as well tomorrow, though? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go tomorrow and prepare myself with a good night's sleep before I wake up in the morning and talk to Hideo Kojima. That's going to be real cool. Yeah. And then I'm we're going to hit the strip. It. And, yeah. you know, do the Vegas things. Yeah. <laughs> circus, circus. <laughs> Cirque du Soleil. Tropicana. Yeah. Make the, go to the Venetian and get freaked out by the daytime thing on the inside. Oh, that is so weird. It's it so is really strange. I did it after like a, my first time being in Vegas and it was like a 13 hour flight or whatever from, from London and it was nighttime but it was daytime the next morning where I was and I walked in and it was daytime there and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and the drugs take, didn't help Exactly. Either. I was like, Bet me to it. That's work, Justin. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about in today's show. Uh, we're going to talk about Zelda in just a second with you folks. Fallout 4's expansion packs. Uh, we're also going to talk about the Division beta, which is opening up again this uh, Friday, if you're on PC and PlayStation 4, a day earlier if you're on Xbox One. Uh, Peter, you're here, so we're going to talk about Street Fighter V, sort yes. of status of that review. Uh, we're going to get Eric in for that, because you literally have to run and get a, an airplane mm-hmm. uh, pretty soon. So to that effect, let's jump into it. So I want to talk about Zelda, but first... Mm-hmm. A little bit of news uh, just broke, a li- uh, I guess, right before we went live. Uh, Black Ops t- uh, 3, there's this weird like starter pack thing they're doing on Steam now. Just want to briefly talk about it. So for those who don't know, this is a 15, sorry, $14.99, $15 multiplayer-only slice of Black Ops 3. There we go. That they're releasing on Steam. It's kind of been like something people have suggested might happen for a while. I was talking to Andy before the show. Uh, apparently, the Call of Duty campaign and multiplayer have been two separate executables on PC for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can get this. It's only got ranked multiplayer. It doesn't have any of the zombies or campaign. doesn't have any like custom games, any of that sort of stuff. But fourteen ninety nine. it's limited. On, you can only buy it from either today up until February 29th. So they're like testing this out. Yeah. And then you can upgrade if you want for 45 bucks. Call of Duty... <laughs> Yeah, upgrade for 45 bucks. <laughs> for 300% of what you just spent. <laughs> for the campaign. It's and something zombies. that makes a lot of sense. Not, we've been talking about that happening for a while because it just seems to be where this is going. You have people who exclusively play multiplayer. I mean, there's a reason that Call of Duty Black Ops 3 was still the biggest selling game for January. Yeah. like th- It's still something that sells really well on the power of that multiplayer experience. Highest selling game on this current generation of consoles mm-hmm. as well. And, and some people still love that story experience. Like, I, I enjoy playing through a game and getting a quick slice of story, and I enjoy that more, usually, than a multiplayer thing. Mm. 
and being able to separate those out, like this is a chance for them to test that out. Like, are people going to be interested in doing that? Especially now, like after the game's been out, if anyone's been on the fence and you just want to get in and play multiplayer with your friends, that's a really low barrier to entry for that. Like, it's, yeah. it's kind of a smart way to do that to also avoid any criticism of doing this like when the game releases yes. and making that sound kind of crappy. Exactly. It's interesting though because it is like a precedence as well where they've now decided to do it. So now next year everyone's going to be looking to see if they do it mm -hmm. at launch, which they probably won't, right? Like that seems like. Uh, I don't know. Like if this is really successful, I can see this being the launch strategy. The, yeah. Here's here's the way that we're we're going to deliver this, and because there are so many other multiplayer centric games that are coming out, even at full price, like um, uh, Overwatch, which is yeah. a multiplayer game. There's not a single player story with that. You're going to get this, and you're going to play multiplayer. And that's it. Eight million people signed up to that beta as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, super popular. Are you I, sure we're not talking about Street Fighter? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Eight million people are trying to get online with that at the moment. Mm. Um, I also had a quick look because this, um, I believe, is only is a PC only deal. I'm pretty sure. Um, I looked at it on Steam to see where Call of Duty, uh, where Blops Three ranked within like the sort of where's ever everyone's playing at the moment. It's down to like 22nd. So perhaps this is a situation where look, we've got the most popular game on consoles at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's maybe not. It's maybe not doing like there's other there's plenty of first person shooters. I mean Team Fortress 2 it's free to play I know but it's like number two Global Offensive no, sorry Team Fortress number four Global Offensive number two like even Gary's mod is still there <laughs> number seven so like maybe that, that gives them an in that way I guess if you grow the player base on PC then chances are more people will buy it the next year do you play Call of Duty on PC? No. No. I, no I like to check out the campaign and I try to jump into multiplayer before I realize like yeah I still don't really love this experience yeah. so it's weird. I, it, for me, it always like I'm a. I played all the classic Call of Duty's on PC, and I love first person shooters on PC. But for some reason, Blops has always just been a console game. I dive into the campaign for a while, yeah. sometimes complete them, play some multiplayer, and then jump off again. Well, I mean, part of that might be hurt by the fact that it does come out every year. We have these other shooters yeah. that are very focused on upgrading the experience that you have, whereas you can always count on there's going to be a new Call of Duty every year. And so it's it's like Madden or any of the sports games. Like you, they, they have a dedicated fan base who know what they're getting into. They're going to buy this every year. And for a lot of the people, that's probably the only game that they buy or one of two or three games they buy in a year. Yeah, super popular. And one of the questions here, just looking into the chat, uh, Burgers X... Z, <laughs> I like B, him already. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, what's the highest uh, selling game this generation? Uh, it, well, the Activision... I guess the numbers came out. They had their call last week, and three of the four games of this generation, high-selling games, are the, theirs, and number one is Blops 3, interestingly mm -hmm. enough. I guess the install base is finally in. Uh, yeah, interesting. I've, I've just like it broke just before we came on, so I said I mentioned it. Uh, so if you have any thoughts uh, in the, if you're watching this live or watching this on demand, let us know what you think. Will you be picking this up for fourteen ninety nine? You've only got two weeks to do it. Uh, let us know. Anyway, Zelda. It's an anniversary. This it game is. came out. A long time ago. 30 years ago. In a galaxy us, far, far away. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yep. <Japan. laughs> uh, yeah, it turns 30, I guess, this week's Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. simultaneously making a lot of people feel very old and also stirring nostalgia mm -hmm. in, their, in, their, in their bosom, as it were. Um, I didn't grow up playing Zelda games. My first one was actually, uh, I guess, the GameCube one. So, so Phantom. Uh, Phantom. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Phantom Fame. <laughs> Not Wind Phantom Waker. America Glass. Wind Waker, yeah. sorry. Wind Waker was the first uh, first uh, Zelda game I ever played. Which is the one that holds up the best. Like, when you look at it, like, graphically. Those look really good, yeah. yeah, yeah. They, they made this cel-shaded graphic. And, the, like, at the time, like, we all derided it as being this kind of crappy-looking kitty game. Like, mm. this, is, this isn't Zelda that I know. But now when you look back at it, you're like, this still looks amazing. Like, that cel-shading was such a great idea mm. for making a long-lasting game. It was crazy because the trailer they showed for, like, what the GameCube could do with Zelda... Mm -hmm was the more realistic, like, Twilight Princess-esque yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. art style. And then they came out of left field. But yeah, it's it's great. It's so different, and it stands out. Uh, 30 years, so we're, we're obviously going to make a big deal about it on GameSpot. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of really cool features going up later on this week. <laughs> we're <laughs> obviously going to do it, because it's our job. <laughs> I mean, Pokemon's a week after that. Yeah. It's just, that's what it's going to be now. It's going to be yeah. <laughs> anniversaries <laughs> after anniversaries. But, like, not many games have the staying, staying power of, like, 30 years. Like, it's such a yeah. long, long time. You think about those early NES games. You think about, like, we were saying beforehand about all the crappy ones, like the, the, mm -hmm. the Philips was a CDI mm. games that released. Like, they had some... It was a misstep, but that was a misstep that was giving it to another developer. Right. And yeah. it's not that they didn't ever do that again because you had like Oracle of uh, see, the Oracle of Ages and Oracle Cap. of Seasons, and yeah. those were done by completely different development yeah, yeah. studios. Capcom. But it made them really mm. distrust American developers for a <laughs> while, I think. So do you think that's, what is the staying power of a franchise like this? Like for 30 years, to keep that quality bar, is it just that Nintendo were super protective of their 
of their games and they just do right by them? I think they were able to identify what people liked about the original. Um, and I think they learned a lot about that from the second game because it was so different. Mm. Uh, and I think those two games combined informed somewhat of a formula for the series that Nintendo has pretty much stuck to for the most part. Um, and even if they deviate and do something a little bit different with some of the more experimental games like uh, Four Swords and the like, they still always come back to the one that everyone knew and loved. And in doing so, they, you know, they're giving people what they want, really. And then they innovate once in a while and surprise well, they, everyone. Yeah, they do that great job of having a core experience. Like, no matter what, when you get into it, you know there's going to be a Link, there's going to be Zelda, there's almost always going to be Ganon. But they're able to, to experiment in ways that Nintendo does so well. And they do the same thing with Mario, that each of those games feels fresh and new mm. in exciting ways. While, while still keeping that core, here's the theme, and you get the music, and you're like, oh, this is a Zelda game, and I'm so excited to be mm. in this character again. It's kind of this weird thing where Mario is like the quintessential 2D platformer mm -hmm. experience, and then when everyone else tries to make a 2D platformer, they can't just make Mario. They have to like do something fresh with it, mm -hmm. whereas Mario kind of just has this like nice column of, of this like traditional gameplay that people know. And Zelda's almost kind of a similar thing where it's 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 like every video game. You start off as this low powered character and then you collect things and you mm -hmm. go adventuring places and you find new areas and you get more better abilities. And um, they've almost like cornered the market on this sort of this mm -hmm. thing that just works so good for video games. Yeah. So then they can I guess iterate in different ways without losing too much of that core gameplay, I guess. And it's also how they, they tinker with Hyrule itself. Because mm -hmm. Hyrule is always somewhat familiar, like, yeah, it's a kingdom, sort of like a medieval kind of a feel to it, like in a way, still very fantasy, but it also changes quite a bit over time mm -hmm. as well. And even the sort of, like, the laws of, you know, physics that define that world also change. It, uh, yeah, it's like they're just really good at sort of taking that thing that everyone knows, like you were saying, the core, and just twisting it a little bit to yeah. keep us interested. And they do something that I, I think Final Fantasy is like Square tries to do with Final Fantasy, where you have a core idea, like this is magic and these are people who are going to explore a world. Mm. But I feel like they, over the years, they've changed so much that it's almost unrecognizable to someone who played the original Final Fantasy. Yes. Whereas Zelda is very recognizable. Same like characters. You're, you're in not only the same character, you're in the same world. It's like now I'm just in this world that's put into 3D. And, and that's something that's very... Like for, for me, like having grown up with it, like I get into this world and I understand it immediately. Whereas and someone who's getting into it for the first time, like they understand this in a whole new way, but mm. in a way that relates to them as like, here are the game experiences that I've already had and they're a lot of fun. Right, yeah, just like Madden. <laughs> um, bunch of great uh, comments coming through here on the Twitch chat, on the GameSpot chat. And Munchchomp says, it just had so many standout mo moments in Ocarina of Time. No other game in the franchise really had that story hit uh, after it. Uh, mm. For you guys, what were your favorite Zelda games? Ocarina of Time, obviously, mm. the first 10 out of 10 on GameSpot mm -hmm. back in, it was 1998, I That's guess? That's a lot of people's favorites. Yeah, but for is. me, it's always been Majora's Mask. Like, Majora's Mask yeah. took the ideas of Zelda and put it into an adventure game wrapper. Like, I love adventure games, having grown up with, like, old PC adventure games. Sierra or Lucas? Uh, Sierra. Okay. But Weirdo. It, it took those it took those <laughs> ideas and, like, made it into a 3D world where the purpose was still, like, you're, you're still getting stronger, you're still collecting items and weapons, and you have the great combat and music of Zelda, but it's more about interacting with people and exploring and talking and trying to figure out this world. It's like a, the perfect adventure game. And I think the 3DS version just made that even better, like being able to explore things and figure out what you need to do and where you need to go. Like it was such an improvement on that. Mm. So for me, we have Majora. Uh, Link to the Past, which is, is difficult because I, I really love the original Zelda so much. That was the one I, I grew up with and... As a young kid, I didn't really know how to do how to like complete the game, but I enjoyed the <laughs> adventure. But A Link to the Past was when I was kind of like competent enough to like take a video game, understand it, see it to, through to the end. And I still find the art style really charming. I still find the the two different worlds, like the light and the dark world, very interesting because it's the same place but different. And I think at a, they did that at a time when it wasn't really a wasn't thing that trope, developers yes. did. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, well, I it, think, like I remember you, you were getting through that and you think you you beat the game like really early on. Like, oh, I'm here. I'm right. going to beat the bad guy and I save the princess. Like, holy shit, there's a whole other yeah. world. Then you go on a crazy trip and you're in like the apocalypse. It's I mean, like, no, no wonder you're like Metal Gear Solid 5. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and you know, even again, I think that game established for the series, like when you explore and you run into something that you realize like, I don't know what to do here, but I know that I will find a solution mm. that, will, that will make me want to come back. 
Um, you're talking about, sorry, you're talking about like a link to the past. To the past yeah. yeah. Like, you know, just you encounter like a, a wall you can't break or like a waterfall that like you can see that you can go through. You're like, why can't I go through that waterfall? Like what, what is the thing I'm missing? Mm. And then eventually you find the tool and you can do it again. It's a lot like the, the Metro, uh, the Metroid formula. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think those two games share a lot in common, but because of their perspective, people don't usually compare yeah. them, but they're very similar. It's interesting. Some folks in the chat were saying that as well and saying how ReCore is a game that seems to be sort of taking some ideas from mm. those as well and applying them. Um, a link between worlds then i guess sort of a, an echo of a link to the past 2013 yeah. game of the year for gamespot.com as well uh, it said such a good job of distilling all those elements that work for the traditional kinds of zelda like include the first one uh ocarina of time or not ocarina of time uh, a link to the past but making it feel very fresh and modern and, and i really love the way that it approached dungeons that mm. up to this time we'd always thought of the dungeon as like here's the place where i go and i get the item and then i can find the next dungeon this one was basically you have all the items you have all the tools that you need right in front of you explore and do whatever you want with those yeah. like mm. there was such a a fun way to exp- uh, to change up that formula uh briefly let's talk about some of the the stinkers <laughs> what were the game maybe <laughs> like okay Number one, explicitly bad games. I'm guessing those CDI. You know, the, the, yeah, the hand what Hand of Fate, Wand of Gamelon. Wand of Gamelon, yeah. Those were just. Was, those, those aren't even Zelda. Games. Was that the? Was it the cartoon or was it that that was the? Well, excuse me, right. princess. That's, that's from one of those games. That, no, it? that was from the cartoon. <laughs> oh, oh was it? the art style is similarly is, yes. is even worse. Like it, it makes oh, yeah, the cartoon right. look good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is mind blowing. Like I don't even know who could have greenlit this. Like no one at Nintendo was like, "This is a good idea." Yeah. But someone had to have made this and drawn all of this and gone like, "Let's make another game." This is so much fun and cool. The voice acting is awful it's as so well. Bad. It's atrocious. Oh. I bet I was like lost in translation or something, where they just didn't have the good people in Nintendo of America or right. something keeping an eye over it. And yeah. For the- and they did a lot of drugs. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you look at it, there had to be mushrooms. Like, something. Excuse <laughs> me, drug dealer. Um, and then I guess games that sort of maybe didn't reach the high watermark set by the game when I was younger I did not like Zelda 2 at oh all. no here it is look actually yeah, yeah this oh, is God. Yeah. Like, oh it's just so look at that Jesus Ugh. Christ like it's embarrassing like that's the kind of the thing drugs. Freddy Krueger if you made it you're like I'm not gonna put that on my resume that is for, is that his bong <laughs> <laughs> your bong now <laughs> God it just awful yeah I, I couldn't wrap my head around Zelda 2 either it, it, it was so I mean the first game was kind of obtuse anyway but this one was just like it was such a departure that anything that I thought I'd learned from the original game was just thrown out the window. Like on the overworld map, the first time I remember running into an enemy and then it transported me to this like 2D perspective. Mm-hmm. It was just like, how does that make sense? Like <laughs> before I was engaging in the moment with that enemy, now I'm put into a level that has multiple enemies mm-hmm. just because I ran into one on the map. It was so I, strange. It, it was more for me, it was because of the challenge. Like. I was not used to that kind of gameplay, and it was a very challenging game. It was very punishing. Like, yeah. if you screw up, you're going back to the beginning. Mm. Like, wow, that was, it was almost a roguelike in that sense, where you have to know what you're doing and get through it in the number of lives that you had. For me, like, I don't think I could have beat the ending when I was a child without Nintendo Power. I don't know how you would have thought, like, you have to turn into a fairy and then fall through this very specific bridge to go through a keyhole, and then you have a specific lightning spell that you need to use against the final enemy, or else it's not going to do anything, because that spell never does anything else at any other point in the game. Like, what? Really? Ah. <laughs> Beautiful. And it's not my in, favorite. Especially in an age before the internet. Uh, 30 years, long time. Uh, last one on this, Luna9 in the Twitch chat, saying I was so lucky that Ocarina was the first game I ever played back when I was four or five. To which Prepared Death says, wow, 405 makes me feel old. 30 years <laughs> to 30 more years of Zelda's. Uh, thanks so much for coming in. Peter, you're going to stick around for a little while. Yeah. Justin, you are off to dice right now. Got to get on a jet plane. All right. I have you- the jet is waiting right outside the GameSpot offices. Yeah. I have the helicopter. That's prepared. definitely how that works. Who are you flying with? <laughs> uh, Southwest. Great. Will that be a fun That's experience exciting. for you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. like Southwest. You're going to enjoy it? The bus of the skies. Great. Thanks to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a ringing endorsement. Uh, thanks so much, Justin. We'll Thank get you, you in pretty soon. Uh, Eric Tay, get your ass in here. Uh, we got Eric. Uh, since we're going to talk about Destiny and we're going to talk about the Division and stuff, because you don't know anything about those, Peter. Not really. You idiot. Do you not? <laughs> you, <laughs> you moron. There's some truth to that. <laughs> Did you play the, Des- the Division beta last week? No, I couldn't. I'm too busy. I don't have time to play everything that I probably should. Yeah. But that's well. why we have more than one editor at the person office. reviewing <laughs> video games here eric what's up what up how you doing doing all right how was your weekend it's okay it's a three-day weekend i i, I tweeted out yesterday morning that i woke up panicking like oh god i'm late for work <laughs> oh was, wait <laughs> it's president's day that was I'm me on sunday really i was dreading coming into work on yesterday but and then yeah, thank god 
beautiful. Yeah. It's a weird thing here that there's so many of these bank holidays that like nobody seemed to know that we had Monday off until like Thursday. And yeah. then somebody mentioned it and was like, oh shit, really? Well, President's, President's Day. Day is like one of the odder holidays. It yeah. doesn't really yeah. like, we don't, don't have shock Day, Prime Minister Day in the UK. <laughs> and like, we don't really have like a, like a type of meat that we eat on President's Day. Like, right. You know, every holiday sort of has like its protein. Meat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving, you got turkey. turkey. Christmas, you got ham. Oh, really? I guess. Oh, it's turkey yeah, for us. I guess Christmas so. ham. What Christmas about ham uh, is a thing. Thanksgiving? Oh, sorry, we said that's that. Still, that's what about Fourth of July? <laughs> Barbecue of some sort, right? There you go. Hot, there you dogs. Go. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Cinco de Mayo is is uh, carnitas. Pico de Guayo. <laughs> <laughs> Pico de Gallo. Pico. Pico de Gallo. Pico de Gallo. Yeah. Pico is that Pico de Gallo. Cinco de Mayo. Pico de Gallo. Cinco de Cuatro. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, we got all of them. Who's your favorite president, Eric? Uh, I don't know, Lincoln. Sure. <laughs> wow, the passion. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. <laughs> what about you, Peter? Uh, Who's your favorite president? If you had to pick one. If I had to pick one, you know. I'm really not good at the politics thing. I've liked Obama so far. I'm sure there's some things he's done that I might not like if I knew about them. But yeah. hey, you know what? By and large, he's been a good guy. Yeah, there you go. Good guy, Obama. Who's going to win next? Jeb Bush. Trump. Jeb Bush isn't going to win. Tweeting out pictures of guns with... With his, his name mom, on like it. giving him a hug in the background. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's weird. I don't know. It's yeah. The presidential race right now is very strange. It's like a fucking like I don't know anything about America. I don't know anything about <laughs> your politics. I don't know. I don't I've, really I've, either. I've not lived here since but man, this looks like some crazy race of like <laughs> but very sp- divided people. We're a democracy, like, but the, the crazy part about it is there's these things called super delegates, which are uh, every every state has delegates and super delegates, mm-hmm. and those really dictate who gets elected president. Delegates are, for the most part, beholden to the popular vote of the citizens. Superdelegates yeah. don't have to do any of that. Right. So, therefore, we can rally behind all these people all we want. You might say, oh, man, Trump is ahead in all these polls. But superdelegates, they're going to be like, you know what? This guy's a crazy asshole. Hell no. The delegate was good, but else. the superdelegate was a much better console. Way better player. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. 16-bit. Yeah. 16-bit. Well. Let's talk about video games. <laughs> Let's do it. Before everyone just decides. God, because all everyone's talking about is bloody CNN. politics. It's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be 2016 is just a year of clickbaity goddamn political headlines. Anyway, mm. speaking of clickbait, Destiny 2, baby. It's coming out. 2017. 2017. We're going to bring a, <laughs> some sort of large expansion pack in 2016. Yeah, good. I wasn't sure if they said fiscal 2016 or if they meant 2016. 20, I think they meant 2016, 2016. I think it's going to be 2016. I would assume it would probably be in that like anniversary type range of like September yeah. when the kind of the game came out originally. So... Taken King has done a really well for them. Mm-hmm. By far the most popular expansion pack, 25 million registered users. Jesus. It was a good expansion. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. is the expansion had fixed, yeah, fixed a lot a of lot problems of that people yeah. had, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So are, what do you want as somebody who like has played a lot of Destiny, especially last year? You're kind of off the ball. Like, there's, mm-hmm. The content's not there right now, right? Like you're not playing Destiny right at the moment. Uh, I, di- I hadn't played for a while. And then this week I played a little bit. Uh, because they had an event, they had like a Valentine's Fucking, Day event. Yeah, they did. Um, double XP. No, they don't have double XP yet. Partner, game, but no. uh, yeah, but it, it but uh, it was fun. It it, it was two v two PvP was kind of the the big standout there. But uh, they also have new emotes that you can spend with microtransactions, <laughs> including uh, you know the strange dance I think, which is essentially Hotline Bling. Oh really? Um, yeah, yeah, and it, then, it, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there was like the awkward gotta, dance, which is uh, Napoleon Dynamite. So. Oh, that's yeah. That's like some that's some 2004 World of Warcraft elf bullshit. Right sure. There. Yeah. Exactly. I guess they already own the animation. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> just I, drag and drop, yeah. right? That's how it works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I played a little bit. Uh, two oh, days, there you go. Look, probably yeah. two days worth. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, it was it was fine. Uh, I'm not playing it like I used to. Uh, but then again, part of the reason too is my raid group stopped playing. Right. It was kind of the weekly, we would get together and we would play. So that's why these things matter, right? These mm-hmm. like temple releases because then you're like, all right, we're back in, right? Yeah. We're gonna- yeah, but there's also the problem of when people quit and they were already kind of starved for content yeah. and kind of getting bored. It's harder to bring them back. It's true. You got to keep um, them on that sugar. You got to keep... <laughs> Yeah. Fresh supply in their bloodstream at all time. Like I'm struggling to potentially get one of my raid members to come back whenever this expansion comes out because he's like, I think I'm just done. Yeah, I think Too I'm done. And, and and then my other and then the other raid mates like, oh yeah, you know, if you get him to play, I'll play too, but yeah. only if he plays. And it's like, great. Now I have to do this weird 
friendship yeah. managing thing where it's like, <laughs> all right, I guess if I want to raid with these guys again, I got to like, go. You want to go see the film, but it's not a really good film. It's kind of a shitty one. And, but like, if you can just get like one of your friends mm-hmm. to go. It's like, who else is going? Yeah. <laughs> I had the oh, hardest shit. time getting people to go see Magic Mike XXL. Oh, really? Dude, it was so That hard. was not a good movie. Did you see his pecs? I love the first one. Like, I genuinely <laughs> like it. You, you see, you're joking, aren't you? I have not seen either one. But damn it! <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Got it. But him. now everyone knows that you have. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with my yeah, masculinity. If, the, if I heard that that movie was funny, I would go see it. But the, no, fir- no the first Magic is- Mike is genuinely a good movie. It is? Yes. You're the first person who's ever said that to me. Okay, if you go in with... with <laughs> low enough expectations Magic Mike is a, it's a surprising movie it's not what you think it is kind of is it the heart- second one is exactly what you think it should have been <laughs> <laughs> anyway sorry <laughs> too much Magic Mike <laughs> chat happening um, Diablos X says Eric already planning the week long flu to have around the game's release please uh, are you looking forward to uh, are you looking forward to like a new expansion pack or are you more looking forward to like a Destiny sequel um, I think just because I don't know if I'm used to it now. I am looking forward to an expansion, especially if it sounds... Because it sounds like it's going to be probably as big or somewhat close to Taken King size, yeah. not so much those smaller ones that they did release, in which case that means there's going to be a raid. They're kind of done is, with those ones, right? The smaller ones. Yeah, it seems like, like those are done because they're doing these little events like WoW-esque, I guess, in a way. Mm. But it sounds like it's going to be a little bit bigger, um, probably because it has to be bigger. It has to make it until Destiny 2, right? It has kind of got... to keep your interest for a little bit yeah um so looking forward to the raid i mean i think that's the funnest part of destiny it's still one of the kind of the obstacles though for them a little bit because they don't have a system in place where if you don't really know people to play with you know uh, to experience that but if they have all the single player stuff too i'm looking forward to it and i don't need to take a week off because i'll be playing in the office there you go (laughs) the beauty of working at Mm -hmm. gamespot.com we're very lucky uh yeah so do you think they'll have to add eventually some sort of ability to group up with randoms because it doesn't seem like a bit like if like they had that core group of people mm -hmm. who were playing all the time so if it does become a little bit more disparate i don't know the mechanics of these communities but it seems to be something that enough people are calling for, right? Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is right now there are tools, but they're not within the game, right? There yeah, are like, like websites, websites and, stuff. and stuff you can use. Thought Bosch, um, Reddit, basically. Reddit as well, yeah. But uh, they generally work out, and most of the time, surprisingly, people aren't dicks, and yeah. there's been a surprising amount of community strength in terms of people that Sherpa other people, and they're really good about it, like live streamers and whatnot. Mm. Um, but yeah, hopefully... In, Hopefully by Destiny 2, I don't think by this expansion you're going to see anything like that. Uh, I would I would hope that by Destiny 2 there's some type of in-game mechanic. Because they already have kind of matchmaking type stuff. And mm. they do have numbers behind your character, right? So they can probably take that math and say, okay, well, you're within this range. This is fits the, the raid range. You guys should be able to play together mm. and class-specific type thing. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. And I guess last point on this. For Destiny 2 to whatever they end mm-hmm. up calling the thing. What does that game need to be? Does it need to be like a similar slice of gameplay, but just like new maps, new areas, new story, new campaign? Or do you want like a Burning Crusade type of like game that takes what's there already, adds more like sort of quality of life mm-hmm. stuff, maybe connects it up a little bit more fluidly? Uh, like what is it that you want in particular? Are you happy with what's there? Would, would you be happy with that like disappearing and going to one side and like a new game appearing? Or would you want? Would you like to keep that? Is it important that that sort of stuff remains and that there's more layered on top? Um, I think it would be nice to see maybe like two more new planets or something like that. I think that the game's always going to revolve around some of the stuff that's already there. It, it does a pretty good job of that now. Um, there's like all these areas that you know people walk through, and then they're oh, this is part of DLC or something, and then they expand right. on it, and you're like oh, that's pretty cool. You know, they they do a good job of all these like the scenery and stuff like that is beautiful. It's a thing that I don't think enough people talk about. You can you can walk around and you can see something and remember that and have a memory of that. But I think I I want them to build upon the world that they have now. I really want them to kind of go even more so towards the story that they've kind of slowly have fixed a little bit now yeah. with Taken King. And I think if I read the news today, they got, I think Bungie has hired the Mass Effect Andromeda guy or person, their story. Their, oh, okay, their, cool. I think, I think um, and hopefully that 
person helps create a you know bigger story so for Destiny too. Nolan North back in the booth. Yeah, yeah. Dinkle. Or Dinklage. Let's just fucking yeah. double down on that guy. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, thank you so much, Eric Tay, yeah, Destiny expert in the office. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> really appreciate it. Uh, folks in the chat chiming in as well. Burgers B saying a huge raid would be very cool. Team Toaster wants Destiny 2 to be a prequel. Uh, let us know what you want out of Destiny 2 uh, in the comments below. Gentlemen, there's so much like random ass news got dropped over the past two days. Uh, the latest thing to talk about is Fallout 4, the expansions. Bethesda have come out and basically outlined the next three months worth of DLC that they've decided to put out. Like, there was a bunch for Fallout 3, Broken Steel, The Pace, Point Lookout, that Mothership Zeta thing. Um, right now, they've announced three different packs. They're coming out March, April, May. Uh, the first one, March, is coming out sometime in March, uh, Atomatron, $10.00. Apparently, there's hordes of robots everywhere. You go out and kill them. Uh, there's this big one called Robo Brain, which you have to kill. Mm -hmm. And then you can basically construct your own sort of robot out of parts you find in the world, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Wasteland Workshop one is coming in April then. That's $5. That seems to add just a bunch of stuff into workshop designs. You can capture raiders and death claws and sort of traps, and then a bunch of like additions to various aspects of the creation stuff. And then the big one, Far Harbor, coming out is sometime in May. That's $25. Uh, it's a, some sort of Nick Valentine uh, quest off of that, where you basically travel off to somewhere off the coast of Maine. There's a place called Bar Harbor, is that right? In mm -hmm. Maine, mm -hmm. apparently. So. so like probably a play on that. Um, yeah, where you travel off the coast of Maine to a mysterious island uh, where higher levels of radiation have created a more feral world and uh, navigate through the growing conflict between Synths, the children of Adam, and the local townspeople. Will you work towards bringing peace to Far Harbor? And at what cost? So that's all coming out. At the moment, the uh, $30... I guess season pass still applies. Uh, all that stuff adds up to 40, mm -hmm. but actually the season pass, because they sort of went, and there's, there's more stuff coming out after these packs, but they've also said that um, they're going to release, uh, they're going to put the season pass up to 50 bucks at the end of the month, I guess. So a lot of the stuff there, 30 bucks right now, 50 bucks, <laughs> three of those coming out, lots more coming out for the rest of the year. They're also going to do closed betas, which you can opt into to get all this stuff early if you want. Um, Peter, you're a big Fallout 4 fan. You enjoy playing the game. You reviewed the game for GameSpot.com as well. Indeed. Uh, what do you think about this in terms of their DLC strategy? We've always known there'll be DLC coming out for this, or assumed. Yeah. Uh, does this stuff excite you? If, all... Which of the three sort of excites you the most? Uh, the Bar Harbor stuff sounds really interesting to me because I definitely found the, the stories that were a part of the Fallout 4 experience to be the most interesting aspect by far. Uh, that's what kept me going and kept me like interested in the moment-to-moment -moment stuff. Um, I, I didn't get anything out of the workshop. It didn't do anything right. for me. Um, so I don't really care about that. The, the robot building aspect sounds kind of interesting, but I'm curious like how deep that goes mm. and to what extent that actually like has an impact on the rest of the game you're playing, or if it's some just like thing off to the side. Yeah, you know, like oh, here's a little robot mini game type thing you can do. Well, like, Bethesda, a lot of Fallout 4 had stuff off to the side. <laughs> that never really impacted, like the settlements. Yeah. yeah. Like I enjoyed doing that stuff because uh, for whatever reason, just OCD or just like tinkering with things. Mm. But it is like a very divisive part of the game. Like plenty of people didn't didn't enjoy it. Did you do any of that stuff, Eric? Uh, I did very little because um, definitely at the time when we were, you know, giving stuff up to do, mm. um, was it on my priority list? It, I don't, I guess I don't care about that. It's yeah. it's a strange thing. You like the um, shooting more, right? I, shooting and looting, baby. Uh, <laughs> See that how the tone in his voice got all excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Pep in your step. But um, and everyone in chat's like, yeah, of course Eric likes a loot game. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the settlement stuff didn't really do anything much for me. The robot thing, like Peter said, sounds cool. It sounds like a kind of like a small little bite of you know mission maybe like a couple missions or something maybe just something to do off to the side it kind of sounds like the power armor a little bit uh, th what they yeah. said here is choose from hundreds of mods mixing limbs armor abilities and weapons like the all new lightning chain gun uh, even that's customize cool. their paint schemes and choose their voices so see that's cool so that sounds yeah. like a thing where you can actually develop something within the game that makes a difference yeah presumably. Like, a like a like a what do you call them uh partner like a companion companion, companion. yeah basically yeah, yeah exactly yeah but so one that that you can really just go to town on i mean that sounds good yeah the workshop stuff seems pretty small all right like i mean it's five bucks so it's probably going to be pretty small uh, and then yeah the far harbor based on uh, bar harbor we're assuming uh, that's like that reminds me very much of what they did with point lookout which was you get on a boat in fallout 3 you go off to like an archipelago <laughs> and there's like this big calvert mansion is there and all like cool stuff to do around there and it's kind of enclosed within the world 
Uh, and that stuff always fun as well. Like when they just let you go off somewhere and it's like it maybe isn't necessarily affecting all. Apparently, right. there's going to be settlements in that part as well. You mentioned Nick Valentine. Was that just sort of like a reference, not like an actual component? I think it's it says Valentine's Detective Agency uh, is okay. where it starts. So I think maybe they get a call. Okay. Instead of it just being like a radio signal that <laughs> pops up. Like That's where the mission stuff. starts or whatever. Yeah, it says it's the biggest landmass they've ever put in an expansion. Wow. Including okay. uh, including uh, Skyrim, the Elder Scrolls section. Hmm. So yeah, stuff sounds cool. Is there anything? So they've said that those are the first three. I'm sure at E3 we're going to hear about what they're doing for the rest of the year. 30 bucks seems pretty decent um, considering what you're getting and the, the chances of more. Uh, but is there anything that you guys would like to see that they sort of haven't touched on here? Anything that you can think that they could add to the game? Which is kind of a difficult question because a lot of that stuff you could say would be mods at this yeah. stage. Kart racing. Car racing. <laughs> Horse racing, like Horse the Witcher. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think uh, <laughs> if, if you know if there's an opportunity to maybe expand outside of Boston, which it sounds like they're doing, right? Mm. I mean, like that's kind of all you can really do because after you've played the game, you've kind of explored all of Boston that they've already given you. Yeah. I, it'd be weird if they tried to add more within that because right. that would change the context of many things. Yeah, but yeah, like more side story stuff because there's obviously you know this what it's like. It took place. I forget now. It took place at the same time as Fallout Three, like uh, slightly or before. Slightly before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a like lot 10 of stuff. Years before. There's stuff happening in the world around you, outside of this little city. Like, mm. so just keep telling those stories and do it with the same kind of care with characters and society yeah. and building those things and fleshing them out. How That's all. Yourself, Eric. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I like that they're doing more weapons and stuff like that. I think mm. uh, more fun stuff like that is always cool. I think it was funny watching. Uh, Rob do like the the junk jet. He's just like shooting oh, yeah. like bowling balls and <laughs> so forks many gu- and stuff guns like that. Never, you might never touch as well. Like the game is so yeah. expansive already. So yeah. maybe just fun, more fun guns and stuff like that. But like you said, uh, it's kind of hard because those things are kind of like almost like mods, right? They're starting to get into that territory of like if it's not a story or a mission or something like that, then it's kind of like yeah, yeah. It's a strange one to try and plug in all this stuff into a game, especially if you've got like completed a game. Like yeah. I find it strange going back to The Witcher a little bit and doing more quests, considering how my <laughs> game ended. And they literally say, this is what happens to the main characters. Right. And then you're like, ah, oh, I'll just go back. Just chop some fuckers' heads <laughs> off or go. Uh, it's strange, but uh, there you go. I, I guess the last point on this, what do you guys think about the price? Um, $40 if you were to buy it all separately. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's hard to say without seeing what exactly the stuff is. 30 quid for a season pass. Uh, I mean, it's going up to fifty. You're yeah. talking to the guy that buys Destiny DLC. Oh, okay. So <laughs> as long as it, uh, you know, and, and it, if it's the biggest they've ever added, you know, it sounds like you're gonna have a lot of, you know, main mission type stuff with mm. side story stuff. So sounds like it's a pretty good deal. I mean, yeah. right? If you want more Fallout, I hate course. to equate like hours with value. Mm. Right. I spent seventy hours playing Fallout Four, mm. and uh, and I felt like I told you know. They provided us a copy of the game, but I got mm. my theoretical money's worth out of that. $25 for an expansion, however big, does seem a little bit pricey to me. Right. It would have to be really substantial um, and something that I could spend a significant amount of time with. If I can complete it in one like hefty sitting, mm. like four or five hours, I would feel a little bit strange about that. Yeah. But uh, the raising the cost of the season pass is very strange to me. Yeah, it's 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 almost like they didn't expect that they were going to make as much stuff. Right. And if you're maybe doing that, maybe you could end the said project way and give it for free, maybe a little bit. Like the, the workshop thing sounds a little bit like you could have just gone. There you go. Yeah. It's almost strange because then like if if they do this, right, like I don't know any, any other season pass that's gone up in price. Yeah. Down the road, I mean, what's to stop that from becoming a thing and then having people worry that they need to purchase the season pass yeah. as soon as possible, lest something like this comes up. I mean, at least we're getting a warning, but it is a bit strange, yeah. I think. Uh, we've only got a couple of weeks left, so if you're interested in getting Fallout 4 stuff, go get the season pass, I guess. <laughs> or don't. Uh, yeah, figure it out. Maybe some of the... Uh, the the Fallout 3 stuff was very hot and cold as well. Like, you could not bother with Mothership Zeta, maybe. Some people like that one. Like, that was kind of okay. Um, same with, I guess, was Operation Anchorage as well, which was, that was kind of, was all right. So maybe it's worth seeing what the reviews are. Uh, anyway, let us know what you think in the comments below if you're interested in it. Uh, if you're going to pick up the season pass or if you're going to pick them up individually, let us know. Comments. Below! Twitch chat, I'm keeping an eye on you as well. Do not worry. Everyone's talking about The Division like it's going out of fashion now. They can't <laughs> wait to talk about it. Um, so I guess let's jump right into it. 
let's have a little chat about the division. Uh, the closed beta was on. Was it two, two weeks, weeks ago? ago I yeah. believe yes. Uh, there is a new one coming Thursday, February eighteenth. This Thursday on Xbox One, and then if you want to play the not shitty looking version, uh, you can Damn. pick it up on PC <laughs> a day later. I'm so sorry, Microsoft fans. It does not look good on Xbox One. I'm just saying it. it doesn't look that much better on PS4, but yeah, it, it's... you know the PS4 and PC versions out then this Friday, a day later, February nineteenth. Uh, it's going to run until February 21st of the month. That's the Sunday. Yep. Who knows, though? They pushed the other one back a day, so they could do it again. Uh, they've added tech missions, I guess. The tech side. The, well, yeah, it's a it wing. The closed yeah, it's beta. a wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then that big, uh, what is it? Like the, the big sort of area that you own. There mm-hmm. is like, it's divided up into various wings. And then the tech one was previously closed. So they're going to open yeah. that one up. So new missions, I guess. In that so section. you're probably going to save someone like you save someone in the medical mission. Yeah. It's going to open up. Uh, it's It'll open up some new skills as well. Probably not too much because in the closed beta, you're only really able to get, I think, two medical skills and then kind of like perk one of them. But mm. at least you'll get to do that. Uh, but yeah, Tech Wing. Maybe there'll be a third beta with a security wing. Yeah. Probably not, though, because the game's <laughs> almost out. But. I know, yeah. We're pretty close. <laughs> only a month to go. Uh, they've also... We talked a lot about the Dark Zone a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and sort of how it worked and why it didn't work. And there was like very interesting sort of things at play there, but it didn't really feel like it was clicking particularly right. So they've added a lot of sort of incremental touches to it. Uh, there's new high-end weapons available in there. The refresh rate on the chests has been greatly reduced. Mm-hmm. Uh, non-player enemies in the Dark Zone have been significantly increased in number. Uh, non-player enemies in the Dark Zone have also been uh, buffed slightly. So they're, they're doing a lot in comparison to that stuff. Um, and then some other bits and bobs manhunt timer now pauses instead of refreshing when the combat uh is a level five rogue so it's all very like again yeah they're, they're definitely tinkering before release i think dark zone is a major point of interest for them because it seems like you know that's kind of be i wouldn't it's like their main pvp yeah, exactly section, basically right it could i don't want to guess but it could be end game too you know you never know because yeah. all the best all the best guns are in there like i I'm curious if you'll ever find a high-end gun in a mission. Right. I haven't seen one, you know. I've seen blue drops and stuff like that, but haven't seen high-end. Uh, but, yeah, it'll be interesting. It's, I'm glad they're populating the dark zone more because you could run for a while and not yeah, see yeah. anything but other people, and then everyone's kind of running to these uh, points of interest, like the library or, like, the the sports store where everyone's trying to fight over the, yeah. you know, whatever AI is there because that's where you're going to get your drops to kind of get... Uh, to get them out of the dark zone, extract them out of the yeah, dark zone. Yeah, it felt so. like players were having, like, they were engaging with other players almost out of boredom sometimes. Mm-hmm. That it was like, yeah, people were being way more aggressive than they normally would, except there's no one else to shoot, so fuck it, I might as well shoot this yeah. person instead. <laughs> Especially because there was like, there's hardly, there's not really that much. If you haven't picked anything up, there's nothing stopping you from just going in and trying mm-hmm. to shoot everyone, right? Like, yeah. There's nothing, yeah, you're not going to lose anything. It's definitely another thing they're probably going to have to look at. And, and like you said, they are tinkering the rogue system. But going rogue is fun, uh, especially, like you said, if you have nothing to lose. You're, well, you're always going to lose something. Like, you'll lose money and experience. But if you're not carrying any items, then, you know, what's to stop you from going rogue? From doing it. You know, uh, so. Game Delay in the Twitch chat says, Devs have said that you can get high-end weapons in missions, but they're significantly more likely to drop in the DZ. So yeah. there, there's some stuff in there. Uh, yeah, it should be interesting. I'm wondering what it's going to be like when more people get involved. That was a closed beta before, but it did seem a lot of people were in. Yeah, it seemed like I... It wasn't like Overwatch, where it seems mostly <laughs> like it's press and streamers and then some extra people, but it, it seemed like there was a Yeah, there was a people fair there, amount of people in there. Uh, it's hard to say because I don't know if the Dark Zone areas, if they're locked to, you know, like almost like server type things where there's like... 20 to 30 in this dark zone. There's yeah, another yeah. 20 to 30 in another dark zone. Like, you don't really have a grab. It's not like Destiny where you're in the tower, even though that technically has an, a cap of people, but you see, you know, like 30 people or yeah. something like that. Other than that, you see like strays here and there, and you're like, oh, yeah, hey, hey, bud, you doing the same mission? <laughs> I'm running there too. I'm shooting. Why are you shooting me? Why are you shooting me? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, should be interesting to see. Anyway, if you're interested in getting it, uh, you might want to start downloading right now. 27 gigabytes. Yeah, you can preload it. <laughs> you can. You can uh, preload Xbox it. One. Yes. Xbox One. Uh, yes. You can preload it on PC as well. <laughs> oh, nice. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Because I'm I'm already in there from the previous beta, so for me, it's already of, it's mm-hmm. up there. So test it out. Who knows? Or you can just buy Call of Duty for fifteen dollars and play multiplayer on that for yeah. a while. I think you get a good. <laughs> I think you'll get a an a, a 
big enough slice of kind of what the game is and how it feels to at least know if you're going to want to buy it. Yes. But they do lock a lot of the skills and stuff behind, like, away. Like, you can't touch those. And that looks like the more in-depth stuff. But, I mean, but you're if totally you're just curious. Right. Like, this, mm-hmm. this like, we talk about betas as demos, like how when we grew up it was demos and cover discs and downloads. But, like, betas are becoming so much more prevalent. And obviously, there is technical reasons why they're doing this. I yeah. mean, the fact that they've done all these changes to the Dark Zone shows that. But it, this really feels like a game that, like, I didn't know what this game was until I actually played it for five minutes. And I was like, oh, God, like, okay. And then yeah. after like two or three hours, it was kind of like, you, you get the feel for it. Um, so I think it'll, it could definitely help you if, if, you, if you're going to play this game and not enjoy it, you'll probably know pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely still stuck kind of in the middle. How, how are you feeling about it? Uh, I'm interested, for sure. Uh, I want to see all these other later skills and how that uh, changes things. I want to know what, like when I hit 20 or whatever, I think that's the max level potentially. Uh, you know, what is the end game like? Is it, only the dark zone in pvp or mm. is there some kind of almost like raid-esque type thing um it, it, that's what i'm more curious about uh the the mechanics the shooting mechanics are fine the cover mechanics are okay you know what i mean it's because like, some people have problems with like everyone in the chat's talking about the you know bane 122 and hasun are saying the only thing uh i've seen of the game that bothers me is i hate spongy enemies and that was one of the things that like made me go ooh straight away and they're making them more spongy yeah in yeah, the dark yeah right? zone, so more hands <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I guess um, it's it's I don't know. Like when you snipe someone in the head, in in theory, right? You should be dead. But yeah. you know that's not how video games work. So it's not how this video game works. Um, <laughs> so some video. Yeah, games Yeah, you just work. see a lot of numbers. Kind of, it's yeah. kind of like almost like wow. You're just like, yeah. and then it finally dies. <laughs> Gank them up. Yeah, so I guess we'll find out later on this week. Uh, yeah, let us know if you are interested in playing the beta. And actually, as well, if you're watching this, uh, maybe on GameSpot or YouTube in a couple of days' time, once uh, the beta is live and you've played it, let us know what you think, and we'll circle back to this bad boy on next week's lobby. Peter. Hi. Sorry, I know you don't. You didn't really play much Destiny, so I, I wasn't going to talk to you about it. I took or, a sweet, or the vision, sorry. I took a nap. It's good. It's really refreshed. Just, feeling uh, good? What do you got for me? <laughs> oh, it's just an easy one. Okay. A little, little video game. It's been... Six years since there's been a previous one of it. Uh, that's actually a massive lie. There's been More than that. there's been a lot of eight years actually, but it's also a lie because there's been a bunch of Street Fighter fours yeah, yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. But Street Fighter Five is officially out. No, as of today, really on PC. You wouldn't know it and home video game <laughs> consoles. Uh, yeah, like I said, that's you know it's been iterated on for years. Super Street Fighter Ultra Arcade Edition, yeah, 2012 updates, uh, all that madness. Uh, but uh, this is the first time. This is the latest, I guess, numbered version. It is the fifth Street Fighter game, uh, and you have a review in progress up on the site. That's correct. With good reason it seems like you've held back on giving a final uh score and a final yeah. assessment of it speak to that first of all why why did we not and uh, when will we see the final review up there's a couple of reasons uh primarily though the game doesn't really have that much single player content mm. um so you know if you're the type of person who doesn't have a friend right next to you it, you don't really have a lot to do except train and maybe go through survival mode the other option is playing online, but the servers were really sporadic and fickle before launch. Really? And Capcom was telling us, oh no, this is part of the process. We're getting ready for launch. Right. What you're experiencing now won't, ex- won't happen anymore. Um, so I couldn't really review the game because I couldn't say whether or not online worked. I didn't actually have the real experience that a consumer would have. Mm. And here we are on launch day. Thank God we didn't put up a review because servers yeah. are still having issues. Yeah, so it happens every once in a while. It happened with um, Halo Anniversary Edition, mm-hmm. I remember, a couple of years back with Chris. Uh, I played some. I tried to play some last night, had a bunch of connectivity issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about one thing, actually, first of all, over the weekend. Um, Daigo played, uh, had a bit of a fiasco himself. Yeah. Uh, he played a <laughs> show. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Let me have one dad joke for episode, please. Uh, part of Capcom's, I guess, publicity for the game. Um, Daigo played Libre Fiasco in Showdown, just down the road, actually. Yeah, There's actually, I don't know. I think it worked out for in Capcom's favor, but mm. it, I, it definitely started more on Twitter. You know, Lupe started to just... he, he It wasn't for this, necessarily. Right. He just was tweeting and Facebooking about how, you know, he plays a lot of Street Fighter. He grew up playing Street Fighter, loves Third Strike. And, uh, you know, I think a Mad Cats representative who, uh, Mark Man, who no longer isn't there anymore. But anyways, they he, he got them to get the match right. Yeah. And so now, they played last, last night, night, they played last night, Lupe Daigo, uh, Lupe won, 3-2, somehow. Uh, I, I, I'm sure. Somehow, because somehow. Street Fighter Five is a game where enthusiastic <laughs> casuals can come in and stand toe-to-toe with the pros, right? Well, hey, <laughs> I mean, I like kind that. of, that's right? the marketing he, line. He did, he did look, okay, he did look 
like I mean, a Don Riker he, keeps beating Jason A. Striker yeah, who plays mean, like all the time. So sometimes yeah. when you can't, did he give him the game? Yes, yes yeah. for sure. Yes. Yeah. You can tell. Because like Lupe did a lot of wake up dragon punches mm. and most pro players will catch on to that, let you do that, punish you severely. He let him get away with that a, a decent a good amount of time, like a fair amount of times. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of a sign of like, eh, he's kinda he's not blocking all the time he's and whatnot. Back. But yeah. I will say to Lupe's credit, he's it's not like he doesn't know exactly what he's like he, he's not he a looked good. Masher. He looked pretty good. Like yeah. he had minimal training. Not some he scrub coming in. Yeah, yeah. He he only got forty five minutes or so to play uh, to train a little bit with right. Combo Fiend and you know he you see you saw it right there he just Shout dragged punch. Combo Fiend. and so you know he, he 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 did pretty well but at the same time you know like Daigo started to try to parry a lot of things yeah. like mm-hmm. instinctively he hasn't you know played as much you know against someone like Lupe where he might just throw something out so he, he doesn't have all the parry timings right. down so, but you could see That's he was he trying to do. he was so maybe. jazzed <laughs> to get one game in maybe he's throwing those parries like you know with the incorrect <laughs> timing just to make it look like are we, are we gonna see a rematch at Evo then um who knows <laughs> like, will they keep this stretched out who knows the rematch I mean, man the rematch always makes more money than the first one well, some money <laughs> yeah I guess so uh, I mean Daigo's pool. gonna be there so it's up to them Let's if see. they wanna do the run back Lupe wasn't at the Grammys <laughs> better things to be doing uh, anyway let's get back onto the, the review obviously like yeah. the, the community of Street Fighter is super important thing loads yeah. of people tuned in and watched that mm-hmm. last night uh, and also on the Steam I guess reviews at the moment the community are really letting Capcom have at it especially in terms of the the networking stuff. Uh, what type mm. of networking problems did you have? Was it just like well, servers weren't weren't up consistently? I would lo- I would turn on my PlayStation Four, go on a PC, and it would tell me, "Hey, you need to make a fighter ID." And it was like, well, "What about the last five that I made?" Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they kept just wiping the server. So I've, I have I've had no sense of like ownership of a fighter and progressing and earning experience and all that and like and how that feels. But but even so, like it's the the game is. It's pretty anemic right now. Yeah. There's not a lot to it. And I've heard on the PC version, I need to actually test this today, that you can't change the button configuration. So it actually will preset it to a keyboard, or if you plug in a joystick, yeah. it has to be a direct X supported joystick. Right. Or X direct, sorry. Or what will it work, or work at all? X input. Right. It doesn't do direct input controllers. So something that is licensed by Microsoft and fits within their sort of like API, right. yeah, yeah. it will automatically bind to that. God, that sounds crazy for people who spent like hundreds on on off Microsoft, you know, off brand joysticks. Well, no, I think, I think most, of those, most of those brands will work. Anything that, that'll work on uh, like an Xbox, for example, will yeah. be fine because yeah. that shares that um, X input library. Like, I'm not too good at fighting games, but I always go into the single player stuff when I do them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I love Street Fighter 4 and play through that with a bunch of characters. Uh, the single player stuff in this is so sparse. Like, the, the main campaign stuff I haven't done all that much of, that seemed pretty small. The challenges section as well, man, I mean, like, you, I was, like, I'm not good at fighting games, but I was breezing through these. Uh, You're talking about the survival. Sorry, survival. Uh, challenges mode. are not available. Yeah, challenges are Oh, really? And yeah. challenges will be the thing that people play to have fun with the game and become a better fighter. Yep. Right. You know, and it's where Capcom can provide tutorials for specific characters saying like, this is why this dragon punch is so-and-so or this, that's why, you know, this, uh, this V trigger is more special. Like they'll, mm-hmm. they'll inform people how to play the game and in doing that, provide them a way to connect with it, not just become a better competitor, but to actually feel like you're, you're, you're playing a game and growing, you know, over time where yeah. right now it's like, okay, you can train locally, you can play this super easy single player content that is there, or you can jump online where you face the same concern. You, everyone's always faced with online fighting games. Whereas you're gonna go on, you're gonna get your butt kicked, you're not gonna learn anything and you're gonna yeah. feel embarrassed. And that's a really easy way to grow distant from a game. Hmm. You know, if, if all you have is playing against the CPU and playing against someone who's gonna destroy you for the most part, what you know, what's left? Yeah. Sort of seems like they're on both ends of the difficulty spectrum there as mm. well. Uh, I had a weird situation yesterday. Sorry, I wasn't. I wasn't. What was it? Survivor mode, right? That's Survival. The one, so that's the one against the AI, right? Yeah, that's the one where you go for like ten rounds, or thirty, or mm-hmm. hundred, and you play like different people who jump in. Is that the one where you? Uh, I wonder if that's because I played one where I basically like fought somebody for one round yeah. and then it asked me that I want to take a supplement for right. the next yes, one. That's yeah. survival mode. Yep. Yeah. That thing, yeah. So I did that and I f- killed the, f- the last boss of that section, I yeah. think. And the game, like, I guess it was trying to like register that I'd done it on the network and it fucking crashed back to the <laughs> okay. main menu. So I was like, what? I just killed all these dudes and then boom. <laughs> it's, it's worse than the scenario you paint. It's right. not, I mean, it's still bad. It's not that the game is trying to, at the end, connect to the server and say something. When you have the sort of fight request stuff turned on, or you're just connected to Capcom Fighters Network, yeah. and you're playing survival mode, if there's a problem with the server at any point, 
it will kick you out. Really? I got to fight like 26 out of 30 over the weekend. The servers yeah. went down. Sorry, back to the main menu. You lost all that progress and you have nothing to show for it. Yeah. Furthermore, if you're playing offline because you're trying to avoid that sort of thing, you don't earn fight money. Yep. Oh, you're kidding. Fight money is the no. in-game currency. You can only earn fight money when you do things while you're connected to the internet. Can I yeah. spend money on fight money? Uh, you can buy Zenny, which, <laughs> which is yeah, the real Zenny. money currency equivalent of fight money. I got it. Um, and for that, you can spend <sighs> six bucks to unlock new characters when they come out. Oh, that's a nightmare. Um, what's interesting is like I, I find the way fight money is distributed to be very uneven. Um, story mode, incredibly mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. Yeah. I got through it doing the same command just to see how easy it was. Yeah. The same action for the entire thing. It took less than an hour. What did you do? Uh, pressing forward and hard kick. Oh, right. just, just repeatedly. Never did anything different. And I got through it. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no difficulty setting, right? Absolutely the, no yeah. difficulty setting. Um, wow. And so the problem is you beat that and you get 100,000 fight money. And you're like, cool, I just got a fucking fat wad of cash. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, you go online, right? And you struggle for three rounds and you come out on top and you're like, man, that was, that was really hard. That was a real test of my skill. Yeah. 50 fight money. <laughs> wait, wait, how much did you get for Is that a company? win or a loss? That's a win. You don't get okay. any for a loss. 100,000 for story. 100,050. Well, is 100,000 all this, like every character every, story? Every character, but every single character can be completed total mm -hmm. everything in less than an hour. Yeah, because it's, it's just four fights, right? Per <laughs> Not for everybody. Oh. Fang, for one example. One of them is two, right? One of them is two. <laughs> Fang looks, shows three chapters. The first two are the only ones that are actual fights. The third part is just a storytelling campaign. The first two fights for Fang are both against M. Bison. <laughs> Wait, watch both games? Both. Okay. Right. Does he change... Is I, it skin, doesn't, maybe? It doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> goes into Omega Bison. Who cares? It doesn't. It's so easy. It doesn't make any difference. It is throwaway content, and they try to provide these backstories for these characters in an entertaining way. And yeah. it's like kind of lighthearted and goofy, like where some of these characters put their priorities. Right. But the art that's used to present these stories. That stuff looks so rough. It is so poor. Knowing yeah. what Bengus, the artist behind it, had done in the past, like I'm not allowed to say that I know that he rushed it. But yeah. Give me a break. This this stuff is not the work of an artist who sat down to render something completely. There is stuff that is w worse than a storyboard sketch. Mm. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense. And you said in your review in progress, uh, and it was exactly what I experienced last night, was that some of the stuff looks like look, some look looks unfinished. Like some of the frames yeah. look like way worse than the next one. There's no consistency in quality either. None. None which I know whatsoever. it's like. It's not that important on its own, and people might say we're nit nitpicking, but it sort of speaks to this. It the whole package just feels like it's not really there. The, the attitude behind this game is mm. exemplified in something like those images. Yeah. Because for as much as Capcom is saying that they want to make this and you know a clean slate, bring everyone else in, they're releasing this at a time so they can hit all the tournaments, so people who are yeah. fighting in them have access to the game. Mm. They're leaving out modes that are for single player, you know, or just for the more casual audience, which mm -hmm. is the, the majority of the audience. Yeah. And then when they do go the extra mile to give them something, they don't even finish the lap. Yeah. It, it, it's really unfortunate because the gameplay itself is really freaking good. Mm -hmm. I love all the systems that they took away from, you know, they took out of four and all the stuff they replaced it with. Like, it feels great again. Like all these old characters that seem so familiar, they're actually like different. And I want to play old characters that I never cared about before now because of how different they are. Mm. Um, so playing it is really fun. And when I'm sitting next to someone, it's great. But when I'm waiting for matches online and it just takes so long to connect and then I get disconnected and then I'm just back in the main menu by myself in my living room. It's like, you know, what? I don't, mm. I'm going to play something else. There's nothing for me to do here unless I want to fight against a CPU dummy ad nauseum or do the survival mode stuff and not earn anything for my efforts because I'm not online. It sounds like a nightmare of a game to try and review because like you were saying, people playing next to each other, like the desk beside me has had Richard and Julio playing yeah. a bunch. In fact, they're going to be doing a stream of Street Fighter V right after uh, the lobby, so make sure you stick around. But yeah, like there's been people really, really enjoying this game in the office, but then mm. when you get online, it's like a chalk and cheese kind of, it's like, it's, it's completely different. What's been your experience of it, Eric? Have you enjoyed it? Have you played any online stuff um, or has it mostly been local? I haven't played online stuff. I kind of started seeing the tweets and stuff last night, like, oh, I can't log in, I can't do this and that. So I've been playing in the office because we've had it early, which is, uh, you know, lucky for us, of course, again. But uh, like, like Peter said, I enjoy it. I think they've done a lot, they've made a lot of good strides in terms of the systems and the mechanics that they've changed and, you know, uh, selected on and also again just picking 
making characters that were old kind of feel fresh and yeah. different. And even someone like me that plays Ken, he plays totally different. I don't even know if I like his normals anymore. I might pick someone else. He's got the know? worst V skill in the game, by the way. Wait, no, why, his what's run, his one? You gotta, you gotta, uh, we just gotta learn how to use it right. Yeah. He's, the run skill. Uh, it's, it's a run? So he, he yeah, just runs forward the and then has a kick at the end. Oh, okay. No, no, no. You can do other things though. You can run cancel and stuff. Oh, you can? So it's mind games. Okay. okay yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I can see that being, yeah. yeah. But, but like immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like On paper, boring, yeah. But see, but, but to, to kind of harken on that point, yes. maybe if the game showed us what he could do with that Precisely. B skill. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's super important. And Street Fighter 4 shipped with a lot of this stuff. It's just, it, it yeah, as a, as a beginner, I felt Street Fighter 4 actually had my back. Yeah. There was like decent training mode, which yeah. was kind of half decent. It is so obvious how much is missing for this game because of the timing associated mm-hmm. with its release. All right. And that is really unfortunate because I, I want this game to succeed. And at this point, I think it will. Like, I think it will catch up. I, you know, I want more characters, and, and a lot of competitors don't necessarily like a bigger roster. Yeah. And I can understand why because it, it makes it harder for you to understand all the matchups, but it also dilutes. The you know who's special and for what reasons, mm. but at the same time it also provides more variety for people who maybe they're bored with one character, right? They're not hardcore competitors; they want to play this other person. But even for competitors, it gives them more challenges too. Yeah. So they need that. They need the story mode that provides a better representation of the world and these characters. Because let's be honest, Street Fighter is a series that's been around for a long time. It's earned a an incredibly valuable legacy, mm. um, and it's and it hasn't handled it properly. So if it can do that. It, can, it really can be substantial and feel special, but it's going to take months. And uh, I, I, I don't know. Char- I think charging 60 bucks is too bad. A lot of people on PC were able to pick it up for like 30% off. Yeah, really? like, there were like green man gaming or something. Yeah, green, or, yeah there, there, there were, there were those deals. weird Got kind of down European <laughs> companies with their, uh, yeah, yeah. With their cheaper uh, PC code yeah. or whatever. But um, I, that stuff's coming in June though, right? I mean, not that I want to give them the sure. pass that like, and it kind of sucks that you don't get a day one, but at least it's, I guess, coming to st- like better story too, I believe, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be like a, oh, like really? an hour or two of cinematics, you know, oh. so 3D and engine stuff. Um, from some of the things I, I, I watched during like a preview event a while back, they had a short trailer. It was fine. It looks good. Um, but, but really it's the, it's the secondary activities. It's the, the challenges, the trials, yeah. like all that stuff that really lets you interface with in the game with the game in a different way. But you know, dude, there's not even an arcade mode where you can just I play know. through. So you know. that's immediately what I go for yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I spent, it was like, I remember the only other time I felt this way was when I bought Battlefield Vietnam and it said there was a campaign in the back of the box and then <laughs> there was no campaign. <laughs> I spent like five minutes on the menus being like, where the fuck is arcade mode? You can't even play versus mode against CPU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like these are basic things that have been in fighting games Forever, <laughs> which don't seem like they take all that Dude, much. It's got survival mode. Yeah, yeah. If it's got survival mode, why not tweak that a little bit and make it arcade mode? Like it's, it's not that difficult. Mm. It really isn't. And I, I don't know if they thought that like survival mode would be a good replacement. But like you said, it's super easy. You can buy these supplements by trading in points. There's no challenge. Yeah, it doesn't feel fulfilling. No, where like you I never through, needed a supplement. Yeah, no, exactly. You easy. don't even need it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not even like good at these games. Yeah, but like, man, remember the arcade modes where like, okay, the first fight was easy. Second fight's yeah. a little bit harder. And it keeps ramping up, and then you get to a boss where you're just like, damn. Fucking Seth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, the Street Fighter, is it, it lacks like the, the spirit that so many people attach themselves to. Yeah. The competitors have what they want, but mainstream yeah. does not. It's weird. Hey, uh, when do you think you're going to post a review? I mean, uh, this is a real tough one. It sounds like in one, it's, it does so much so right in, in this way, but the same game for two different people who play it for different reasons yeah. is like a completely different experience, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm ready to sort of give my opinion on all that, but what I need to do is actually give the, the game a couple days yeah. uh, to play on the servers because I've been able to get online today. I've also been booted today. You know, if, if it can become stable by tomorrow, let's mm. say, that'd be great and that'd be really good to know because I don't want to publish a review one day saying the servers suck and then Capcom was like, hey, we figured it out. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I need to also test the netcode when it's at its best because uh, Street Fighter V uses a feature called rollback. And I forget exactly how it works technically, but essentially it'll go back in time after uh, missing some, uh, some frames, mm. you know, and, and with, with low ping. Uh, and that can create some really dramatic problems when you're fighting. At least it did for me. Like, a lot of the teleporting around the screen to where I was just hoping I knew where I was going to be at a right at the right wow. moment when it caught up to the past and like it, yeah. it, it doesn't work. So I need to make sure that you know that stuff is optimized as well. So I think uh, definitely by Saturday morning, um, hopefully by Friday. 
cool. I'll have my full review up. All right, thanks so much. A lot of people in the Twitch chat talking about the problems they've had with connecting. Uh, some other people have sort of had better issues. Uh, Mundus6 uh, says, I've been playing all day today and last night perfectly. Uh, every one of my friends who plays on PC hasn't had any problems. All that play on PC, PS4 are, though. They can't play. Um, I had problems on PC last night. I've heard so. some people have. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think... If you're lucky, you're lucky. It's like if you got in, you're yeah. lucky. You know, like sometimes it works out for some people, sometimes it doesn't. So for sure, uh, yeah. So we're gonna attempt to do a stream of this in a couple of minutes' time, right after the lobby. So make sure you stay tuned here. If you're on the Twitch uh, channel, it'll be happening immediately afterwards. If you are watching on Gamespot, I would imagine you have to go back to the homepage and click on the now playing link. I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, so that'll be the case. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much a show. One last thing I want to touch on. It's not really a big enough section to talk about sure. in its own right, but um. Uh, last week, Microsoft came out with some interesting news about, I guess, some uh, my, some Xbox One fans weren't happy that Alan Wake was getting a day and date release on PC. I mean, Sorry, Quantum Alan, Break. Alan Wake. Oh my God, Quantum, Quantum Break. Break. So close. Quantum Break. It's a me. What's his name again? <laughs> Mario. No, not Mario. <laughs> <laughs> that, one, <laughs> that definitely was a Mario accent. <laughs> Who's the lead guy in Remedy again? <laughs> oh, uh, Mario, right? Sam, Sam Lake. Lake. Sorry, yeah. Andy knows behind the camera. Yeah, Sam Lake. It's a me, Sam Lake. And now, it's, now it sounds like Mario. <laughs> and I'm going to show you some gameplay for Quantum Break, for <laughs> Alan Wake. It's the same thing. Sure. It's, it rhymes. <laughs> okay. Come on. And Max Payne, it doesn't rhyme. Yeah. Uh, at least, yeah, at least I'm not naming a game after somebody's name this time. Uh, but yeah, so that's coming out on, on PC. Uh, but what they also announced was that that and Gears and a couple of other ones are coming out on PC, but they're not coming out on Steam. Yeah, it's so Windows they're gonna, 10, right? Yeah, they're going to yeah. sell them in the Windows 10 micro... Mm, mm, fucking this. micro... Micro store. micro store, I was about to call it. <laughs> they should have called it that instead. Um, in a weird way, this shouldn't be news because there's nothing forcing people to put anything on Steam. It's yeah. a third-party piece of software. But like, I hardly ever play games that aren't on Steam. Like, I fucking hate opening Origin. Like, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, Do you remember your password? Do you have the access code for this machine? <laughs> oh, God. You need two references, personal references, before we accept Really? Them. No. <laughs> I just put Steam. Might as well be the... <laughs> I just put the Steam authenticator on this guy. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, what do you think of that? What that does that... I, I feel like this is just a big fanboyism fucking conversation. Like, it's just people pissed that they don't get to use Steam. I prefer to be on Steam. But yeah. like, it's not really that much of a big deal, is it? Unless there's some sort of like money tied to content that's specific to one platform or another mm. and there's like a disparity there and people are getting gypped i don't i don't see the issue here yeah i i, I don't maybe it maybe i'm maybe there's something i'm missing the one thing i don't like is that this we may be in a you know activision call of duty situation although their games are on steam but like there may be an issue where like the best thing about steam is that oh. stuff goes down in price i remember the problem now what's the problem is there any online associated with this game with Quantum Break. Yeah. I don't think there's any multiplayer, but there probably Gears, will be some sort maybe. of DLC. Right. Gears, on the other hand, yes, definitely. So you have to pay for Xbox Live to play those games. Oh, online. you're right. That might be the issue. Okay. I could yeah. see that. Yeah, that changes it a bit. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't want to have to spend money to play Gears of, a Gears of War remake. But you would have... Oh, well, uh, I guess the new one, I guess. Maybe. Is, yeah. yeah, I guess that's true. I was going to say, you would have played on Xbox One anyways, but then maybe not either if it was on Steam. Yeah. It's interesting how much they're going to roll into this because you can see that this may just be a... Like the Xbox One's what's selling like half as many as the PlayStation 4. Mm -hmm. This may be a case of them being like, look, you know, we want Remedy to sell some games here. We want our Gears game to sell not just on this like tiny little install base. So it makes sense for them monetarily. But it does kind of take a little bit of the sheen off the Xbox One if like all their big, you know, exclusives are essentially coming out on the biggest platform ever. I think Microsoft is shooting themselves in the foot yeah, by staying so committed too. to the Xbox One brand. Oh, really? You, you guys think agree like, with me before I finished? <laughs> I, I thought... I thought you, you were going to say gonna, something else. Yes, I thought you were going to go with by... <laughs> Not being on Steam. No, I thought you were going to go by putting these out on PC at all on the no. same time. Well, maybe in the short term. But I think in the long term, Microsoft is... It would behoove them to unify their platforms. Sell... Just sell things that are called Xbox that run Windows. Steam machines. <laughs> sure. I mean, <laughs> call them whatever the hell you want. They've already figured it out. But but they essentially yeah. have two markets, and they're trying to juggle them. One, yeah. they're losing. The other one, they're really losing. Which ones am I talking about? You don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, no, I know. Right. But they, but they, but they could seriously like join their effort together, and sure, maybe even keep the console thing, make it low spec and affordable, mm. so it can still run the games that come out on PC. But unify that stuff. Own the space that you have your fingers in, but are not committing to as like one big unit. You think like ultimately that's just going to be the future anyway, in like three, they, four they years? Really should. I mean, they're yeah. they're hinting at sort of unifying those 
yeah. those platforms in one way or another. They might just mean in terms of community and accounts. I think that's kind of already a thing. Yeah. But dude, yeah. it would make so much sense if they could dominate those two spaces. Mm. Interesting stuff. All right, let's wrap a show. Bunch of stuff this week. Thank you so much. Uh, we talked about Black Ops 3. We talked about Zelda Turn of 30, Destiny 2, uh, the Fallout 4 expansion packs, Divisions Beta, Street Fighter 5, and Microsoft. So much stuff happening. Video games, man. They're super popular. Thank you so much for watching this show uh, live here on Twitch and on GameSpot for watching the on-demand versions. Of course, you can watch the full show at any time uh, on GameSpot immediately afterwards, pretty much. Uh, to folks who watch this on YouTube, apologies that when it goes up as a uh, on-demand video on YouTube, there's always like this 10 minutes of shit at the front. That's basically so we can get it up like immediately without having to wait like a day or so. Um, and then that's why we trim it down after a couple of days because we get to render it. Uh, and if you're listening to this on iTunes, thank you so much uh, for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it sounds good. Uh, let us know what you think of it. You can comment in the comments and comment there. Hit me up at Danny O'Dwyer um, if you want there. And also please rate and review us on iTunes. Let's uh, get some more ears on this show. That'd be super fun. Uh, thank you so much again for supporting the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Peter Brown. Thank you, Eric Tay. Thank you, Justin Haywald, who is flying over us right now, <laughs> waving down. <laughs> Uh, and thanks to everyone in the production uh, booth as well. Uh, big thanks to Josh Shaw uh, and to Mary Kish, who was running TriCaster today as well. Uh, stay here. Julio is going to be playing. Uh, Richard is going to be playing mm -hmm. Street Fighter V live right here on Twitch if you're on GameSpot. Back out to the homepage and then you'll see the link to it. And we will see you next time, Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific, right here on GameSpot.com. See you then. <laughs>